Hi, my name is Brandon and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. And today I'm reading some more from The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. Yesterday I started to talk a little bit about protecting ourselves, what we do when we're scared, when we've got fear, and we start to turn inward to protect ourselves. I'm going to continue on that topic today and talk a little bit about some of the issues that happen when we do that protection and when we really get into a mode where our fear takes over and we stop letting ourselves experience the world around us for what it really is. So reading from the book, he says, Ultimately, if you protect yourself perfectly, you will never grow. All your habits and idiosyncrasies will stay the same. Life becomes stagnant when people protect their stored issues. People say things like, you know we don't talk about that subject around your father. There are all these rules about things that are not supposed to happen outside because they could cause disturbance inside. Now, I'll stop right there especially for alcoholics and addicts. Think about your life, think about your life in recovery and ask yourself, do I have my own, even if it's not spoken, even if it's not written down, do I have a set of internal rules about what has to happen in the world in order for me to not be disturbed or even more dangerous in order for me to stay sober? Um, that that's that's the kind of thing we got to think about here are we setting up rules for how the world needs to be in order for our lives to be a certain way um and, and that's the protection that starts to get us into a little bit of the danger zone here living like this allows for very little spontaneous joy enthusiasm and excitement for life most people just go from day to day protecting themselves and making sure nothing goes too wrong. At the end of the day, when someone asks, how was your day? A normal response is, not too bad, or I'll survive. What is that telling you about your view of life? They see life as a threat. A good day means you made it through without getting hurt. The longer you live like this, the more closed you become. Well, that is a perfect description for most of my life. I mean, uh, especially in addiction, uh, in my active addiction, yeah, a day where I didn't get hurt was a victory. So now what Singer is saying here is that we, we shouldn't use that as a condition for the quality of our lives. And we should recognize that sometimes hurt is part of what it takes to grow spiritually. And the disturbance we feel from hurt might not be so intense if we can just open ourselves up to it rather than trying to protect ourselves. So let's see what else he has to say. If you really want to grow, you have to do the opposite. Real spiritual growth happens when there is only one of you inside. There's not a part that's scared and another part that's protecting the part that's scared. All parts are unified. Do you see that duality, how we've got, you know, the part that's scared and then the part that's kind of taking over and protecting that other part? Um, I've definitely recognized that. I felt that before my, in myself. So uh, the question is, how do we start to deconstruct this habit? How do we start to break this down a little bit? And he says, begin by seeing the tendency to protect and defend yourself. So look out for those times where you start to feel like you need to protect yourself, you need to get defensive. I'm, I'm bad about this. I get defensive about things and, and I recognize pretty quickly, hey, you're getting disturbed by this. And that's the first step is start to recognize those situations. There's a very deep innate tendency to close, especially around your soft spots. But eventually you will notice that closing creates tremendous work. Once you close, you have to make sure that what you protected doesn't get disturbed. You then carry this task for the rest of your life. The alternative is to become conscious enough to simply watch the part of your being that is constantly trying to protect itself. So don't protect, just watch. And, and if that part of you gets disturbed, just let it get disturbed and just watch. 
you can then give yourself the ultimate gift by deciding not to do that anymore. You decide instead to get rid of that part, the part that's constantly trying to protect itself. So the next very important thing that he says is the reward for not protecting your psyche is liberation. You are free to walk through this world without a problem on your mind. You're just having fun experiencing whatever happens next. Because you got rid of that scared part of you, you don't ever have to worry about getting hurt or disturbed. You no longer have to listen to what will they think of me or, oh God, I wish I hadn't said that. It sounded so stupid. You just go about your business and put your whole being into whatever's happening instead of putting your whole being into your personal sensitivity. Now that's a good way to think about it. A lot of my time investment in my life has been in protecting myself and protecting the parts of me that are sensitive to the world around me. What if I just left everything open and because all we're talking about is my psyche. You're not talking about protecting my human body, you know, that, that I could actually get hurt. We're talking about my psyche, you know, and so if someone says something that's mean to me, that's not going to decrease my chances of living another day. So why am I trying to protect myself from that? And that's the question we got to ask ourselves here. Why are we trying to protect? so desperately to protect ourselves from things that don't actually do any lasting damage, okay? Now, I'm not talking about verbal or emotional abuse. That's, that's a very different topic. And I'm talking about the day-to-day -day disturbances that we typically uh, are trying to protect ourselves up and, from and then build up these shells around. So he goes on to say, spiritual growth is about the point at which you start to feel your energy change. For instance, somebody says something and you start to feel the energy get a little strange inside. You will actually start to feel a tightening. That is your cue that it's time to grow. It's not time to defend yourself because you don't want the part of you that would be defending. If you don't want it, let it go. So this happened to me yesterday. My wife and I were having a conversation and she said something and I started to get defensive. And I recognized it in that moment. I was like, you're getting defensive. Your heart's starting to race a little bit. You're gearing up for a fight. And there's no reason to do that with someone you love and have compassion for. There's no reason to do that because it doesn't help the relationship. And it's not going to help anyone arrive at a mutually beneficial conclusion to this conversation. All you're doing is trying to protect yourself, your ego, your pride. So when that kind of thing happens, when I start to feel that, that's when I need to relax behind it, let it go, and, and use some of the values that I have in my life, some of the values that I hold important to make the next right decision about how to proceed with that conversation. So he gives a good example, and I'll end with this for the day. He says, when the, energy, when the energies inside start to move, you do not have to go there. For instance, when your thoughts start, you do not have to go with them. Let's say you're outside taking a walk and a car drives by. Your thoughts say, boy, I wish I had that car. You could just keep walking, but instead you start getting upset. You want a car like that, but your salary isn't high, to, high enough. So you begin thinking about how you can get a raise or a different job. You didn't have to do all that. It could have just been, here comes the car and there it goes. Here comes the thought and there it goes. They're both gone together because you didn't go with them. That's what's called being centered. If you aren't centered, your consciousness is just following whatever catches its attention. And when I read this line, I thought, man, that's how I lived an enormous amount of my life, especially my life in my addiction. I, I just followed whatever caught my consciousness uh, uh, attention. And this is why in recovery, it's so important for us to live with intention and to live a life based on principles. 
And that's why for a lot of us in 12-step programs, a huge part of what we do is identify those principles that we want to use as guideposts in our lives so that instead of just following our conscious around and letting it follow whatever grabs our attention, we have intention behind our actions. We have intentional principles that we can use to guide us through life in these situations where we're tempted to go down a rabbit hole just because we saw something nice that we might like, and those kinds of things. So really important for us to recognize the role that fear plays in this um, and the tendency of getting defensive and protecting ourselves and how it can cause problems both for our emotional state of mind as well as the relationships that we have with other people. So that's it for today. We'll continue with this topic a little bit more tomorrow. In the meantime, hope you all have a great day and I'll see you back here then.